Hello, I'm the Brad Lloyd, and this channel is all about making our lives easier and having some fun along the way using Apple HomeKit. Today, let's talk about the Acara wall switch. I've talked a lot about smart switches on this channel, and I've recently started getting more into Acara products. The thing with wall switches is that there are so many of them within a typical home. It's not like other smart home products where sometimes you just need one. Converting your regular switches to smart switches is typically a slow process. I've been converting my home to a smart home now for a couple of years, and I'm just getting to the point where I'm about done converting my regular switches. My go-to smart switch has been Lutron Caseta. They look nice, they're rock solid, and they connect to the Lutron hub so they don't congest my Wi-Fi network. However, they also aren't cheap. The car switches are less expensive than Lutron Caseta, and in my experience, they fit well into the rest of a car's ecosystem. Like Lutron, they use a hub so they don't take up your Wi-Fi. And once you have an Acara hub, well, now you can use other Acara accessories like their mini switch and sensors like door and window, water leak, temperature and humidity, and others. And their hubs come with some really cool features too, like a security system, a camera, or an infrared controller. So let's start with the price. Acara offers a single and double rocker switch and a version with and without a neutral wire. I do find that prices with Acara fluctuate a lot as well as their availability here in Canada. So these prices are as of recording and affiliate links will be in the description to check the current price. As you can see though, it's about $48 to $59 Canadian depending on the switch. Oddly, some are subject to duties and import fees, so if you're in Canada or perhaps other countries, then just watch out for that. It's recommended to use the neutral wire version if your home is compatible. But it's great that they offer a non-neutral wire version as well since many other manufacturers don't. A neutral wire is typically a white wire that carries the circuit back to the original power source and it's said to be more stable. Additionally, the neutral wire switch acts as a Zigbee repeater, extending the Zigbee network and helps you to take advantage of maximizing the number of child devices that can be added to some of a car's hubs. And you also get power monitoring with the neutral wire version. This is something that's not offered with many other switches. Typically, most homes built around 1970 or later are likely to have neutral wires. Today, I will install the double rocker neutral wire switch. Thank you to Akar for sending me this switch to test out so I can provide you with my honest feedback. The double rocker option isn't necessary, but it gives you an additional button that you can use to program other functions. Whether or not this is useful will be up to you. Let's get this out of the box and installed, then we'll take a closer look at what this switch can do. The contents you get in the box are pretty straightforward. Along with the instructions, it includes some stickers that you can use to label your wires. I didn't use these, but they could be helpful and make things easier in the future if you decide you want to change the switch out. Then of course is the switch itself, and you can see it also comes with a single gang faceplate. I'm installing in a double gang box, so I didn't end up using this. Lastly are some screws and wire connectors. I'm installing this in our kids' bathroom. You can see I have a Lutron Caseta dimmer for the lights and a timer box for our exhaust fan. I'm going to remove the timer switch and make the bathroom fan smart by using this new Acara switch. The installation is quite simple and pretty much the same as any other smart switch. The included instructions walk you step by step through the installation and Acara has some easy to follow videos that you can reference if you need help. As a reminder, always start by turning off the power, and if you're not comfortable, then you may want to contact an electrician to have them install this for you. One thing with most smart switches is they tend to take up a lot of room. I had trouble getting a hold of my neutral wire, so I had to pull out my Caseta switch in order to give me a little extra room, but not a big deal. Setting up the switch was easy. This does need to be added from the Acara app, so if you don't have this, then you will need to download it. And as mentioned earlier, you will also need one of their hubs. From the app, click the plus sign to add an accessory, then select the switch under plug and switch. Once you've found the switch that you're looking to add, then you need to select the hub that you wanna pair it with. If you only have one hub, then this will be a pretty easy choice. Otherwise, maybe go with the one closest to the switch. You will then need to hold the switch down for about 10 seconds, and then you're done. Of course, it's always good to update the firmware anytime you add a new device, and then you can program what you want the buttons to do. 
By default, the top button turns the lights, or fan in my case, on and off, and the bottom button is just extra and available for whatever other automation you want. You are restricted to only being able to control Akara devices here, but if you have an Akara smart plug, for example, then you could program this button to turn the smart plug on or off, and that could be really useful. For me, I wanted the top button to turn the fan on and the bottom button to turn it off. This, in my opinion, is just the most intuitive. So to do this, I just created an automation to say, if the lower switch turns on, then turn off the top switch. Additionally, I created a timer that when the fan turns on, it will automatically turn off after one hour. Now, if someone turns it off manually before that, then great, but otherwise it will turn off automatically after that one hour. Of course, you could automate this further with motion sensors, or maybe have the fan come on automatically at a set humidity level. There's a lot of automation possibilities here. I've been using this switch for a few weeks now and it works great. It turns on instantly and I've had no issues at all. A couple of things I do want to point out though. This is a single pole switch. There's no three or four way option. There's also no dimmer option. So I would love to see a car add these products in the future. As I said, it works fast and I love the ability to automatically turn it off after a set duration, as well as the flexibility to add additional automations with that second button. There is a bit of a click sound when the button is pressed that I could do without. And this sound is even present when controlling it remotely. The switch only comes in white, which I think is most common and worked out well for me, but something else to be aware of. I also found that the shade of white is slightly beige. It's not significant, but you can tell it doesn't 100% match my other switch and wall plate. But that doesn't bother me, especially because this is just in our kid's bathroom. Overall though, I think this is a great option, especially for anyone who already has Akara products. I've reviewed Akara's hubs and did a video on my first impressions, so check those videos out up here. The more Akara products you have, the more potential to create helpful automations using Akara's app. I also like the price tag, and I think the savings could be significant if replacing several switches. I will leave links to these switches in the description in case you're interested in picking any of these up. Do you have any of these smart switches? Share your thoughts in the comments. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon.